Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our Horizon Weekly Insider number 36. Today is April the 16th and happy Thursday to you all. Please remember that this call is being recorded and it's going to be available in our Horizon podcast as well as in our YouTube channel for you to check out later. Also, please remember to ask your questions on Menti so we can have our regular Q&A session at the end. So without further ado, I will pass the word now to Luca for the engineering department updates. Thank you, Angie, and hello, everybody. So last week, we announced that uh, after Gingerlib, two other libraries were going to come out soon. In fact, this week, uh, one of the main activities that we did in the engineering department was working on uh, those two to prepare them for publication. So the activity is uh, ongoing now, and we are targeting uh, the day of tomorrow for the release. Uh, Alberto, if you would like to jump in and provide uh, an update on this and also maybe on the progress we did on the SiteChain SDK, feel free to do so. Sure, Luca. Thanks. Okay. Uh, let's start from uh, uh, maybe Gingerlib first. Okay, we have been uh, reviewing the Poseidon gadget with Marcelo uh, and everything was okay. And so this was the, the gadget uh, responsible for performing uh, uh, hash verification. So enforcing uh, current hash computation in a circuit. So and this is uh, uh, so it, this is already present now in the in the Gingerlib uh, uh, repository. Uh, another important uh, part related to uh, Gingerlib is um, a pull request that is still open uh, that is uh, related to the mixed mixed uh, radex fft that is uh, let me say is very important because allows to have um, let me say a greater number of constraints on certain uh, curves so uh, we had already a pull request up open, as I told you before. So, uh, but uh, we were not so satisfied about the design of it. So we have been, and in particular, how the inheritance was managed and so on. I mean, uh, this was, uh, had some constraints about uh, the initial implementation of it. Uh, so we have been, uh, I mean, uh, with Daniele, uh, we have been working on it and, uh, uh, it seems that we found uh, a good solution that, uh, from a code design perspective, uh, make it uh, a lot better. And such kind of approach could be used also uh, in other uh, in other part of the of the library, uh, where currently the in, in, let me say uh, object inheritance is not so well managed, and we will be able to extend this kind of approach to other part of the code. But for now, let me say. This is uh, uh, limited to the uh, Mixed Radix FFT that uh, has been improved, as I just said, for, from a design perspective. And, the, and then will be this pull request will be updated and we will uh, merge it, uh, uh, let me say, uh, soon for Gingerlib. Uh, okay. Uh, regarding uh, oh, and this another uh, interesting topic is related to the Merkle tree uh, primitive, and in particular uh, to the implementation uh, of a fast Merkle tree computation. What I mean? Uh, there are situations where maybe we have a lot of leaves and we have to calculate the Merkle root and we have to do it uh, in a very efficient way. This will be, uh, in particular, very, very uh, uh, useful, for example, in Mainchain, where we were where we expect to have maybe multiple certificates per block. And this means that uh, these certificates will have some public in some, some inputs, for example, backward transfer list, but even some other that could be a bit more uh, big. And so we, for sure, we need to have a very fast way for computing this market tree to not, let me say, uh, uh, we haven't, we should avoid to incre increase the block validation time 
and this Merkle tree computation is uh, is affects bl- main chain block validation time. So, uh, considering that we can have many certificates in a, in a block, it's it's very crucial that we have a fast implementation for it. So, uh, Marcelo uh, uh, has been working on a uh, let me see on a way for implementing uh, uh, a multi-thread um, Merkle tree computation. So, um, and this is done in Ginger, uh, in the Ginger library. So, uh, currently we have a, uh, we found a, um, a solution for it, for it, and obviously it's very, f- obviously, I mean, <laughs> not obviously, it's very fast, uh, because, I mean, uh, it uh, uses uh, both the optimization that we discussed in the previous uh, weeks about uh, the inversion uh, tricks that we adopted, but also now even by uh, using parallel uh, computation with multiple cores. So currently from the, the this implementation perspective, is okay, uh, but uh, we are going to... Uh, even uh, um, generalize the interfaces uh, of this Merkle tree, of the in particular of the Merkle tree backend, uh, to be able to, s- uh, for example, let's say that we are going to use this Merkle tree implementation also for the UTXO set in the in the side chain. This means that we have to manage millions of leaves, and this obviously could not work if we keep the leaves in memory so we will need another implementation that uh, for example we use a, a some backend like a database or or something like that and this from the merkle tree uh, primitive standpoint should be transparent so um, the idea that uh, we shared is to have a more uh, abstract interface that uh, let me say, doesn't affect the, the Merkle tree uh, primitive. Uh, that, let me say, is totally decoupled uh, the way we are storing the leaves and the way we are storing the nodes of the of the tree and uh, and how we call this Merkle tree uh, generation function. In any case, um, the um, multi-thread Merkle tree implementation is currently going on. We have, uh, uh, as I said, it, this is working. We are just refining and making more parametric some 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 stuff. But um, it's uh, at a very good point. Uh, okay, um, let's switch on the SDK. Okay, another important part, as I mentioned uh, uh, last week, uh, is the. Uh, Latus uh, protocol implementation and uh, in particular uh, about uh, um, recursive uh, omers. Um, as um, at the first review of that part I required some changes and in particular uh, these changes were, were related uh, to a similar issue that Bitcoin had at the beginning. So, I mean, and uh, uh, I asked some changes and uh, uh, this, week's, this week uh, we have been reviewing them and uh, they were, uh, they were uh, fine. And uh, so we continued uh, with, uh, with this for request review and we have identified, uh, let me say, uh, another need for for change that is related to another part that is uh, uh, how we store uh, in a, in the sidechain block header the proof of inclusion of a main chain block reference data. I mean, this is a quite tricky point, but uh, uh, we we have um, in in the current implementation, in the current model, we have. Uh, separated the uh, storage of uh, the inclusion in a sidechain block of a main chain block header from uh, the inclusion of uh, the main chain block reference data. This is, let me say, uh, the reason for, for this. I mean, there are many reasons for this, uh, but obviously had some impacts. And currently, the way we keep track of if we included a main chain block reference data in the sidechain block uh, is currently uh, implemented in a in a way that is not so efficient. So um, in the today code review, 
uh, I asked for changes in this part, and uh, uh, these are going to be uh, made uh, today, and probably they're going to be finished uh, 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 tomorrow. And so on Monday, uh, we will be able to um, to review also these changes and continue with the with with the pull request, uh, uh, this big pull request review. Uh, and I think it uh, should be almost everything. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. Thank you, Alberto. In fact, the Monday session is already scheduled. Uh, great update, by the way, and happy to uh, see the immediate positive comments in the chat. I'll go on by saying that the uh, main chain changes are also in progress. Some of the pieces there, some of the developments are now ready for review, while others are still uh, being uh, developed. For what regards Sphere by Horizon, we are integrating sidechain commands into it. Now, in particular, we already completed the integration of the list of existing sidechains. Uh, so you can see this list directly into Sphere by Horizon and also the forward transfer uh, transfers to sidechains. So from uh, through Sphere, you can, you can do that from the main chain to the different sidechains. Now we are going um, on the, um, we're bringing on the implementation of uh, automated tests. And moreover, we started uh, also um, talking uh, with uh, involving the UX team, uh, which is now actively involved in, in, in order to help with the design. So also on that front, we are uh, starting and, and uh, seeing already some progress. Uh, then let's speak about the new Explorer project because we performed a benchmark against the current Explorer that we have now to see the comparison between performances. And uh, now they are looking very good in the new one, in the new Explorer, after having applied some uh, fixes. So the next step we are taking is proceeding by integrating uh, the new Explorer uh, with sidechains, in fact, not only we want a, a new explorer for, for main chain, but we also want it to be integrated with sidechains. So these should take the whole next week. And after that, we will proceed with the addition of unit tests. And afterwards, we will also work on the uh, front end part uh, for it, for the, for the new explorer. That's it for now. We'll be here if there will be any questions engineering related. Back to you. Uh, look, maybe just a, a couple of words about I mean, the review that we are uh, doing today. We have been doing <coughs> just before this call. Um, sure. Another, um, the other two libraries that we're working on and they're almost ready are the Zendu sidechain CryptoLib and Zendu mainchain CryptoLib. So uh, currently we are um, reviewing uh, the sidechain CryptoLib and in part uh, how, uh, for example, um, the proof has been, the proof creation is uh, uh, managed and invoked uh, from the Java side and how the VRF uh, calculation are, um, are managed and invoked by the Java side to the the Rust side. So, uh, currently, uh, I mean, everything um, has been already implemented. We are changing um, some way, some in some functions, how we pass the information between the Java side and the, and the Rust side. So, the idea is to uh, have an interface that is m more, I mean, uh, elegant and in a way that on the Java side. Uh, we will have completely hidden uh, how it is implemented on the Rust side. So we don't know about pointers or, or specific structures that are specifically used on the Rust side. So we are currently reviewing it, and uh, uh, I, am, I, am, I really hope that we will finish the review and, and, and the changes uh, by tomorrow. So this should be uh, the target for Zendu Sachi Crypto Deep. And uh, sorry, that's, that's the last <laughs> update. Thanks. Yeah, thank you for uh, providing that. I mean, this is very fresh news from uh, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> thank you, uh, Alberto, and back to you, Angie. 
Awesome updates. Uh, thank you, Luca and Alberto. Let's now move with uh, move on with uh, Ruben for the help desk updates. Hey guys, uh, Ruben here reporting the help desk stats. So this week we had approximately a total of 260 tickets, and which represents a decrease from the last week of approximately 30%. This means that our community have been having less issues on our products and that we are also doing a good job on communicating better and providing better support. So in the pie chart, we can observe that around 81% of the issues were faucet related and the other and the remaining 90% is described in the next uh, plot. So when we take a look at the next plot, the bar chart, we can see that the most common product with issues has been sphere by horizon, which are mainly tickets related uh, with instructions on how to use the wallet. And an important one, people who are forgetting their credentials log inside the wallet. So I want to take advantage of this and uh, remind the community that I encourage every sphere user to please take the time and save the seed phrase in a safe place, not in your computer, please. Uh, in a piece of paper will be great and just keep it safe. Since, remember, this is the only resource you have to restore your funds. Remember to always practice safe crypto. Okay, so moving forward. On the customer side, we went pretty well by having a customer satisfaction of 4.5 out of uh, 57 users. So uh, it's quite, quite a good uh, grade. And uh, also wanted to remind our community that to to raise, if you have any any doubt or questions, please do please raise a ticket at our support system at support.horizon.global. And I think that's it. Thank you for your time. Back to Angie. Thank you, Ruben. Let's continue with Gustavo for the UX updates as well. Hi, everyone. Great update so far. So on the faucet front, we have the HODL feature, which is a new feature ready to go live. So our plan is to go live with it tomorrow. So don't forget to, to visit the faucet. And regarding also the faucet, we are already working on a new set of features, which I cannot yet uh, spoil you guys. And uh, on the HD, we are mostly finishing the front end right now and everything on track on that front. And we've been supporting uh, Martin with web development tasks. And it's all on my side, my two Zenis. Take care, guys. Thank you, Gustavo. Let's continue now with Rowan for the... No, wait, I don't think... No, Rowan is not here today. Um, Vano, any updates for, uh, from the VD side? Hello, everyone. Thanks, Angie. So there are, uh, there are a lot going on behind the scenes for uh, BD Division, but unfortunately, most of it are confidential and we cannot share them publicly every time. Though we are working on internal... KPIs on our KPIs and pushing hard on all fronts, including exchanges, custody, and partnerships. And hopefully, we'll have some good news to share for the community very soon. And also reminding our community that tomorrow we have our virtual meetup at 7 p.m. UTC plus four, just half an hour earlier than Weekly Insider. And I'm pasting the link here in the channel. And that's all from me. And uh, if anyone else from BD wants to jump in, please feel free to do so. Otherwise, back to you, Angie. Thank you, Vano. Let's continue with Lucy for the marketing updates. Hello, happy Thursday, everyone. Um, so first update, we participated in a Simple Swaps Easter Egg Hunt last week. So Simple Swap is one of our exchange partners. We announced an egg hunt on our social media last week. Um, so there are five winners of Zen, meaning that they found an egg that contained two Zen. Uh, so congratulations to the winners. I believe Simplop will be announcing winners today. Uh, so we are also very happy to welcome new committee members who learned about us from the egg hunt uh, because some of them have already started tweeting about us and told us that they're using our faucet to get free Zen. Um, and then the other one is that we have recently integrated with Metal Pay. So uh, it's a Vimo like um, app, but for crypto. So they are a US based leading crypto payment app. Uh, so we also co hosted an AMA with them in their uh, tele uh, Telegram group uh, channel last week. 
So Rowan was a guest and provided answers to questions from the metal community. Uh, if you missed live AMA, it's okay because we have published the transcript of AMA on our So I highly recommend that you take a look uh, because the metal community had some really good questions. Uh, and as always, uh, Rowan uh, provided an excellent answers to uh, to those questions that help people understand what exactly what we are, you know exactly we are doing. So check it out. Um, uh, so we have also been doing improvements uh, on our main website. We have updated several pages on our website, including our technology and philosophy page, uh, and some other minor improvements. Please visit our website and take a look. And the feedback is always. Uh, we're still working on more improvement, uh, improvements as uh, it's it's just never ending job. And uh, uh, we have an active social media engagement campaign. Hashtag how to stay zen uh, is continuously getting a lot of response from the community and team members. Uh, it's really a lot of fun to see these responses. Some of them are very funny. Uh, some of some of them uh, provide tips on what we can do to stay zen, and some of them are very, very uh, uh, encouraging and inspiring. So, for example, uh, our uh, designer, Linda, shared her secret, and she said, I get my zen by doing what I love. Either it's designing or drawing. Also, I stay bullish and huddle my zen, so stay positive. So thank you, Linda, for sharing. Uh, please share your thoughts and tell us how you stay zen using hashtag how to stay zen. We are picking 10 winners from all the entries, and each winner will receive Zen. And lastly, uh, our Twitter followers are now over 60,000. Congratulations to our communication manager, Erica, and the rest of the team, uh, and welcome new community members. And we hope to reach our 100,000 very, very soon. That's it for me. Thank you. I'll pass it to you, Jonathan. Hey everybody, <clears throat> good afternoon. So first off, the Gleam competition for April is over. It was kind of a mix between uh, March and April. We had over 55,000 entries into the competition, which is uh, quite a lot. Uh, so we'll be announcing winners next week. We'll be picking three winners as usual uh, with uh, three prizes. So <clears throat> as Gustavo mentioned, uh, the HODL bonus will be going live tomorrow. So uh, just to clarify, the, the correct name is Sweet HODL Bonus, okay? So Sweet HODL Bonus. It's supposed to be uh, fun, and I feel like we can make some awesome songs and uh, memorabilia out of the Sweet HODL Bonus name. I thought it was so the Sweet Sweet HODL Bonus, Jonathan. Sweet, sweet. That's when you're really excited. Sweet, sweet HODL Bonus. Okay. Um, when you're just kind of excited, it's a Sweet HODL Bonus. Uh, so that's going to be really cool. So basically, what is the sweet hodl bonus? The sweet hodl bonus is a way to reward community members who actually uh, want to keep their Zen, but don't necessarily have enough Zen to run a node. So when you log on to the faucet, you can verify your wallet, and then uh, we'll know will be able to tell how much Zen is in that wallet because you've proved your ownership over uh, that address. And so we'll automatically see uh, how much Zen is in there and then give a bonus based on how much Zen is in there. So it's kind of like a node in a way, but you don't need to have 42 Zen. In fact, the minimum number of Zen you need is really small. I think it's something like 0 0.05 Zen. So we're really trying to target people who, um, you know, want to get involved, but don't have 42 Zen to get involved. Um, and because we value everyone, we value everyone in the community, no matter where you're from and how much Zen you have. So this is a really cool new feature. And uh, yeah, I would love to get everyone's feedback once once it's live tomorrow. So another thing that we're doing, which we've kind of been lagging on, is the language support. We've added so many new features to the to the faucet that we haven't been able to keep up with uh, changing all the features into new languages. So, you know, we have a lot of users from Russia, from Brazil, and uh, what we'll be working on over the next week is taking all the new features and uh, translating them into Spanish, Russian, and all of the other languages that uh, we currently support. 
And lastly, we're working on new videos for the verification process. Uh, in particular, we're trying to make as many videos as we can in as many languages as we can. So the verification process is really easy once you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, it can be a, a little bit tricky the first time. And so uh, the more languages we have, uh, the easier it will be to show people how to verify their address. And that's it for me. Thank you, everyone. Don't forget to ask your questions on Menti. Bye. Thank you, Lucy and Jonathan. Let's continue uh, with Rosario for Product and Engineering. Hi, everyone. Hope everyone is safe and uh, during these times. So we continue marching forward with the upcoming sitechain beta delivery. Uh, and you had the detailed updates uh, earlier with Alberto and Luca. But I just want to remind everyone what the sitechain beta delivery consists of. It consists of four sub projects. So there is the main chain modifications to support the sidechain. So that's this sending Zen from a main chain to a sidechain, the SDK piece, uh, the proof systems, and of course the sphere integration of, of the sidechain. And I posted an image here on, on the chat so you could see what that looks like. And uh, I, I just think it's, uh, it's fantastic. So we'll be able to bootstrap a sidechain directly from sphere and manage your, your sidechains directly from sphere. So that is a culmination of a lot of work uh, that maybe for the, the user will be visualized in, uh, in Sphere on the wallet, but it, it's taken a lot of uh, thought process from our mathematicians, cryptographers, developers, and all that coming together to solve a very complex problem. So I just want to say thank you and share my excitement with everyone. Uh, that's it for now. Thank you, Rosario. Uh, Ralph, would you like to add any comments or updates? Yeah, thanks. Um, so as uh, Alberto is going through the update and talking about the trees and the Explorer and things like that, um, the Explorer for sidechains is a really important part of what we're doing because um, the sidechains are a full blockchain. Um, so it has to have nodes. There has to be shared consensus. There has to be a shared uh, consensus mechanism providing security for the next block. Um, and then we need to have applications to interface for the sidechain. So we just saw the screenshot of the Sphere wallet that shows how you can transfer Zen to and from the, the sidechain. And that's an important part of it. But the Explorer allows us to get all the information on things that are happening on the sidechain so that we can then uh, access it and display it in different ways. And that gets us to the next level of what we're looking to do with the side chains. For example, if we're doing node tracking and payments on a dedicated side chain, we, we need to have the explorer to explore how all that uh, the nodes are staying up to speed and how they're getting paid. And then we can take information from the explorer and put it into a node tracking and payment uh, website, just like we have now, but it's gathering information from the Explorer, uh, which is gathering information from the sidechain blockchain. Same thing like if we use a sidechain for operating the faucet, we would be able to build a website and mobile app that would allow for even more gamification of the faucet sidechain. So it allows us to move the focus from where a lot of it is in traditional cryptocurrencies, which is how much can you buy and sell it for compared to your local government money? What exchanges are you on? And what are the wallets that allow you to transact? To then being able to move to being able to do useful applications in a decentralized and distributed way where you don't worry as much because we don't have to, just because we create a side chain, we don't have to get that side chain token onto an exchange or worry about how to, to send uh, to all sorts of different people. All that's taken care of with the main Zen, uh, with, with the main Zen uh, things that we've been doing for, for years here. And then like if we had a side chain for tracking pets, like dogs and cats, like the primary interface would, again, it'd probably be a mobile app that allows you to take pictures and do things that accesses the pet side chain. And again, the Zen transfer is a minor aspect of that. So um, really, the, there, there's a lot of focus on the Explorer because it's part of building the complete sidechain applications uh, along with the uh, application interface and all the other consensus mechanisms. And so um, seeing the progress on this it, it is really important and it's exciting. So thanks. That's what I got. 
Thank you, Ralph. And now let's welcome Rob for the final part and Q&A. Thanks, Angie. And Ralph, I think I know what side chain you're going to vote on during our competition. And I think it involves dogs or cats. Um, you know, Everybody vote. loves them. <laughs> exactly. I'll probably vote with you on that as well. Um, okay, guys. So the, just operationally, the full focus is, is really on the, the engineering effort here. So the engineering team is on the last mile push for beta. And thank you to Rosario and Alberto and Luca for explaining, uh, you know, the complexity and the detail of what goes into beta. So we have four components and we have basically four sub teams that are working around the clock right now to, to bring this to, or to bring this to market. So great news for the project in terms of, you know, we have a lot to look forward to in the very near future, but it's just a lot of work to get from here to there. And really everyone's just head down focused on that. So what I figured I would do is, is uh, talk a little bit about what we can expect as a project towards the end of May. Um, and this is when, you know, betas, we're looking to publish beta is end of May. So we sh you should expect to see a fully functional beta with the accompanying libraries. And the libraries, uh, you know, already Gingerlib, the, the very big important one, was published a couple of weeks ago. And we have the other two accompanying libraries uh, scheduled for publication tomorrow. And uh, it, the, the important thing to note here is the beta should be... Uh, a mature product where we can really just kind of already start building out use cases on it. Or at least what we're going to do is we're going to also launch a community competition to see uh, what types of applications we can start uh, developing on our sidechain system. And we're going to be voting on them to see which are the coolest ones. And like I said, dogs and cats front of the queue on that, but there are also a ton of potential commercial use cases and you could be, uh, betting on Horizon Labs uh, is already going to be working on commercial use cases as soon as we have the beta brought to market. So there's a lot to look forward to on that. We have um, a big accompanying project, Horizon Developer Environment, HDE, that we're looking to publish also with beta. And the main point here is that uh, HDE, this is for those that haven't been tracking so far, is our kind of uh, social environment where we want to curate development opportunities for the community so that we can uh, start not just encouraging, but uh, facilitating community development and really expand significantly the, uh, you know, the amount of development that goes into the project. A key part of that was getting the beta to market. So we have uh, an SDK that's very useful and, and just straightforward for developers to start building on. Um, so HD is really going to be the focal point for our community sidechain competition. So more to come on that. And uh, Sphere by Horizon, expect another release of Sphere to be uh, sidechain supporting. Um, and along with Sphere, uh, Luca is starting to work with uh, work on a product strategy that uh, you know I'm looking at this as really thinking what is our best path forward across the board with with product. So we need to really think very very clearly about what, what products are we maintaining, what products do we still need to develop, or what products do we need to augment to reach what parts of our ecosystem. So what which segments of our ecosystem are currently being serviced by which products, and where do we have gaps, and you know uh, adjust our strategy accordingly. Um, I see. So we do have some interesting things, uh, not, not uh, us, the foundation specifically, but we have um, you know, some outside financial groups starting to do some market making operations for Zen the, in our currency markets. So that's it's always nice to see our our currency markets maturing. We have uh, some outside analysts starting to look at the project. So in the near future, say about the four to six week mark, I would expect some uh, independent uh, you know, reports coming out about Horizon. Um, so. Interesting, again, to see the maturity of our financial ecosystem. And let's see. So and, uh, actually, I have my notes here. Uh, something that I'm really excited about is our ecosystem governance continues to move forward. And what I want to highlight here was um, Peace Do has been working uh, with some, some of our, our team community members to launch independent community council, the Horizon Community Council, and expect this to be launched uh Imminently, I don't have a specific date for MPC2 on it, but the whole point of it is to empower our community. You can read read more about the community council in our white paper 2.0. Um, but what, what we want to do is we, we, we want to give uh, more 
uh, more clear of a voice to our community, really to everyone here, everyone that cares about this project. Uh, it shouldn't just be a spectator sport where you look at the team and you see what the team's doing, uh, whether it's technology deliveries or going out evangelizing the project or, or building resources like uh, the faucet. We, we need to get more community involvement and in particular on the governance side. So um, if you've been a spectator so far and you like what you're seeing on the project, consider uh, you know participating in the community council. And I think this is a great opportunity to uh, continue the decentralization that we're doing on our governments. And quickly to know that the community council is going to be a completely independent organization. So it's not run by the foundation. Um, it, you know, team members may participate as just you know, regular community members, but there's no, no kind of organizational relationship there between the foundation and the council. And, you know, besides amplifying the voice of the community so that we can really aggregate and understand what the community wants to see or where it wants to see the project going, the council is going to play an important role in uh, the Zen IP or the Zen improvement uh, proposal process and because they're going to be one of three uh, editor organizations. Um, and that's another important point of our governance is uh, actually having a very clear, concise way to make proposals uh, for improvements to the ecosystem. Uh, and you know, this is on the technical side, but also on, on process improvements for how we should be governed, how we should be organized. So the Zen IP process is an important development for us. Again, you can read more about it in our white paper. Uh, but the community council is going to be one of three editors uh, on that. So initially, there will be three editors. There'll be the foundation will have an editor position. Uh, the council will have one, and then Horizon Labs as a key contributor to the ecosystem will have an editor position. And the editors are not meant to be gatekeepers. To, uh, they're meant to just truly be editors. And as long as a proposal qualifies just by meeting standards of what a proposal should be, and you can read about that on our GitHub, uh, then the editors uh, will will process that and move it forward in the Zen IP process. Uh, and the last thing I'll say here is, guys, when when things look like they're bleak and the markets have not been doing all that great for us, uh, like I keep telling the team, and I'll say this also to the community, is it's important to work hard and just focus, focus, focus. So do anything you can to just narrow down exactly what you're, you're supposed to work on, narrow down what's important, and focus on that. Uh, so this is how we're operating as a team, and you know it's important to stay optimistic despite you know lots of external current events maybe not being um, so optimistic. But uh, this will pass, and we have a lot to be excited about as a project. So all the things that I mentioned here that you can expect just in a very short time. So by the end of May, is we're, we're looking at having this big clustering of deliverables and things going live, including the sweet, sweet HODL bonus tomorrow. So there's a lot to be excited about, and you know, I'll stop there and we can open it up to questions. Thank you, Rob. So the first question is, similar to the consolidated weekly PM, can we have uh, open data or full stats, including those information for both class of nodes for every week since inception? So that, for instance, node count, uh, excluded and pool total. Yeah, I, I mean, so in general, I'm a big fan of making our data available to the community. And I know in particular, uh, Peace doing Chronic, we're uh, are looking at providing a dashboard. So Chronic, if you have anything else to add to that, please. Yes, yeah, so generally, it's uh, it already should be possible to, to get all of the data via the um, APIs. So we do expose an API call to get an arbitrary payment master. It would just be, um, right now, a user would have to compile this data himself. Um, but sure, we can, uh, we're always looking uh, to make life easier for all of our node hosters, and um, we could in the future add a, uh, a data export function or something uh, similar, similar to your earnings, um, to make it easier to, to get all of this data. Um, but focus right now for the next release is really... Um, Code improvements in uh, on the backend side, not so much on the front end, and um, we're not going to be adding any uh, any new features um, other than uh, really making uh, improvements on detecting uh, people that are dishonest, dishonest node hosters or uh, people that don't uh, run nodes um, that meet the minimum requirements. So that's the big uh, focus for the next release. But after that, um, sure. We are happy to add new features. 
Awesome. Thank you, Rob and Chronic. So the next question is, what is the budgeting plan for the halving? If the price remains the same, is the team prepared to work through or will there be layoffs? Layoffs. Sorry. I mean, that's a, it's a tough question. So we're, the way that we're, we're playing this right now is we have no idea what the price is going to be post halving. So you can take kind of a, a finance theory perspective to it and just a, kind of a supply and demand perspective that if the, the new supply of Zen hitting the market is cut in half, you would expect that to be kind of a bullish or at least um, like a price positive uh, event. Uh, that said, we really have no idea. So we're trying, we're playing this by being very conservative uh, with what we're doing. And right now, because we've been in what, two years of bear market territory for us, uh, we've learned how to operate very efficiently and we're continuing to do that. So we're continuing to become leaner with how we operate. And, you know, we're, we're not uh, necessarily forecasting uh, today's price of Zen and, and take a 50% haircut on that. That's not in planning to it. That's not how we're, we're uh, staging this. But at least it's on our radar. And because we don't know exactly where the market forces are going to go come November, December time frame. Uh, we're, we're just being very cognizant of that and just being conservative. So I wish I could give a more definitive answer. Thank you, Rob. So the last question uh, is about Zen IP and Community Council. Rob, I think you've already covered a lot earlier. Maybe you can uh, touch, on, uh, touch on a little bit more. So the question is, how can the community get involved with development of Zen? I see the Zen IP GitHub has a uh, has launched. How does this relate to Horizon Community Council? Yeah, so the the community. This is kind of a, a multifaceted effort here to have just broader governance and participation for the community. Um, so this has been our, our roadmap all along to truly decentralize. And you know, we've we've treated this project like we have training whales on, and we just need to get certain things done to have a certain infrastructure uh, to make it capable of having good governance and good decentralized governance. And that means also how we develop on the project. And this has been a long time in coming, but now the community council is meant to you know, have a forum to have a voice to the community so that we can start aggregating sentiment and they can kind of be like leaders of, you know, like very strong community members who can be leaders of uh, kind of having discussion within the community and broadcasting that um, so that we all understand what the real sentiment is. They are acting as editors as well. So the, the organization itself will have an editor slot on the Zen IP. And Zen IP is how we're going to be doing development in the future, or really like as of now, of when we have new, uh, new proposals to do, take the project in certain directions. We want to have an open forum so that we discuss these things in advance um, at length. And the community council has an important position in making sure that we, um, you know, curate or edit the, the uh, process itself in a way that uh, good proposals, or at least when proposals are made, they're done so in a, in a clear, coherent way so that as a community, we can have good discussion around them. Um, and then ultimately, over time, this will evolve into an actual voting system so that we can have direct uh, you know, democracy within the community for how decisions are made. So it's kind of this you know, multi-phased process of how we're just becoming more open and decentralized as an organization, how we're, you know, we're going to be governed. Thank you, Rob. Uh, so these are the top three questions for today's Weekly Insider. Uh, we will post rest of the questions and answers on the Weekly Insider chat channels here on Discord. So thank you and stay safe. Back to you, Angie. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of the day and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.